Hey, I'm M. Angel, and today we're gonna talk about Dunkirk, which is director Christopher Nolan's 2017 war drama. On MGN The Echo, Ovella and I had reacted to the trailer when it came out, and I was surprised to see Christopher Nolan attacking war, well, attacking, producing a war movie. It didn't really seem to be a theme consistent with what he's been producing so far, and I guess maybe I was expecting something like Hacksaw Ridge, but that's not at all what we get. So let's dive in. This movie is dark. See, I had recently watched the movie It, and that didn't give me nightmares. Surprisingly, Dunkirk gave me nightmares. I had night terrors, waking up with these war memories, and I think I had a very tiny glimpse of what it must be like to be a veteran and suffer from PTSD, and it is terrifying. My heart was racing, I felt like I was being bombed. Anyways, this movie gets into your head if you let it and how can you not? As a person who personally is terrified of the notion of not breathing and drowning, there is a lot of drowning, so if that's a trigger for you, be warned, you're not gonna enjoy it, because it's a very suffocating movie, very claustrophobic at times, a lot of water, a lot of confined spaces in a beach setting where I assumed most of the action would have happened on the beach where the soldiers were stranded. Hans Zimmer produced the music. I mean, the score is great as usual. He never fails, so... Mm. The visual definitely have that nolan -y, teal, blue color palette that he usually works with. Dark, yet beautiful. So really cinematography here. You are well served. War movies are usually brown. There's a lot of brown going on with the earth and the dirt and the grime. And I really appreciated that we were more in a clean blue ocean theme. At times I would just be like, ooh, if you remove the bombs and the fire and, you know, the screaming and the dismay, put a few coconut trees in there, you got yourself a nice vacation. Then you were reminded that, no, you know, it looks nice, but this is a war and then the water can crush you and drown you and things like that, so... Mm. Speaking of visuals, the cast... A1. Yummy. Visually appealing. Ladies and fellas who know what I'm talking about, Yes, it was a beautiful cast of beautiful young men. Very enjoyable. I felt the storytelling's timeline was messy, but I think that was done intentionally to convey the feeling of war, which is messy, which is chaotic, and you don't know what's going on at any given time. So we're going to past events, present events, future events, kind of all at the same time, seeing characters, okay, this is what happened like a day before, this is what happened a few hours ago, oh, this is what happened in the future, and it's messy, but it, it destabilizes the audience, and I think that was the intention. It's to really make you feel like, what's gonna happen next, where am I? I'm kind of terrified. Adrenaline rush, the thrill of not knowing exactly what's happening, because it's not a linear story. So it was very clever. Nice one, Nolan. Subtitles, please. I'm sorry, but a lot of the, okay, so first of all, this much dialogue, like, really sparse. And on top of that, I couldn't understand what most of the characters were saying. Uh, maybe it's because my ears aren't fine-tuned for British English, but... As usual, I would say that Nolan produced another movie with a message. He's a socially conscious director who tries to push the barriers of consciousness and reality, society, so sociology, if I could say. I like the commentary he tries to make, and he tries to convey messages without being didactic. And the message is pretty clear here. War sucks. Real lives are at stake. People who don't know why they're fighting, while the big fat guys in the offices just sign decrees and make speeches and speak about people that they haven't even met. Real kids are out there. Really, this movie makes you feel the loss, makes you feel the fear, the confusion, the frustration, the patience, and the uneasiness that comes with war. Of course, we're talking about World War II, times have changed, even the landscape of war has changed, there's a lot more machinery involved, but I think that it's still the same, right? We're all just human beings. And that's one thing actually I wanted to note. I thought it was an interesting choice to never show the enemy, which is Germany, Germans in this case, which makes for a easy good guy, bad guy, clear distinction scenario, right? However, I still think the movie could have benefited from showing us a few German soldiers and really showing the true face of war that even the other side, you think they're bad, but they're also good in the sense that they think they're fighting for something good. 
everyone thinks they're right in these cases. When you leave it like this, it just makes it feel like what we are used to hearing is World War II, the Germans were bad, as if Germans were just born and bred soldiers like in 300 or something, fighting since they were kids. No, they are regular people too. They were kids who were manipulated into fighting for something that they thought would benefit them and their families, just like the, the English and the French. Everyone here is trying to protect family, community. If Nolan's job was to destabilize and to really make you feel like war sucks, yeah, we shouldn't really put our people, our children, our brothers, our fathers, our sons through this. And I guess nowadays, daughters, mothers, sisters as well. Yeah, well, the point was fairly made. I don't know. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. It's your turn to talk. I hope that you enjoyed this review. Remember to like, subscribe to MGN for more reviews, reactions, etc. entertainment. Take care. I'm M Angel signing off.